can only do that when the channel grows more. So I'm really excited about it. And I know you guys are here with me to help me do that. So let's go. That was really cringe. Let's go, but let's go. And here it is, another educational beauty video. Today's video is all about how to apply and blend your concealer and your foundation. So you guys are gonna be like pro blenders by the end of this video. It's so detailed, I think you're gonna love it. Now, if you do like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you don't ever miss any of my future videos. And I'm over on Instagram, so please do come say hi there too. Now we can head straight into the video. You guys know that we always go into a lot of detail on our videos because I love telling you guys exactly how you can create the most flawless looks. I don't want to hide anything from you guys. I want you guys to be amazing at applying makeup on yourself or whether you work as a makeup artist applying on anyone else. I just want to be able to help you guys and I really want to be a part of that and I really do hope that my videos help you. If they do, let me know in the comments box below because I love reading your comments. I read every single one. Today is no different to my other detailed videos. Today is about how to apply and blend concealer and foundation. This is where I'm really gonna kind of like go into detail on how you apply it, but also how you blend it. Like I'm really excited for you guys just to learn, but also for me to really focus on those two things, you know? Because I focus on all different things when I do my base videos. And I feel like this is the first time I'm really, really focusing on the application and blending, you know? So, and I know that's a big question. You guys always say to me, like, what does, you know, how did you apply that? How did you kind of like buff that? What's your version of buffing? Honestly, I, I just want to be clear with you. I have a few people who comment saying that uh, buffing means this or actually this is stippling, or this is this. Like, I'm gonna be honest, I have my, you know, for me, I'm gonna to explain to you what it is that buffing means to me, right? It doesn't mean that that's wrong. It doesn't mean that it's right. It means that you might call it something else. You might call it bouncing. There's a lot of terminology out there and it can get a bit confusing because I, feel like there are a lot of pro makeup artists. I am a pro makeup artist myself. And if you wanna hear more about that, guys, let me know. Maybe I'll do a vlog one day or a wear test. And then in between, I can just sit and tell you my story because that would be fun and it would be very long. <laughs> but if you wanna hear it, I'm happy to sit down and have coffee with you guys and tell you about it. There are a lot of pro makeup artists out there, including myself. And there's a lot of these, like, there, there are a lot of kind of like pro terms that we use. And you know, over the years I've realized that I don't want to get stuck in that. I don't want to get stuck in that, oh, well, this is the right way to say it. Well, this is actually what that means. I am one of those people where, you know what, I don't care. Like, as long as I know what I mean and it's creating the result that I want, then that's all I really need to know. And as long as when I explain it to you guys, I'm explaining what I'm doing, you might go away and call it something else. So you know what? Call it what you want to call it, but I'm going to explain to you what it exactly is. So moving on, we're going to start with our skincare because that is really important. I'm going to start with my eye cream. I'm going to be using my Drunk Elephant Ceramite AF eye balm. You guys know that I always use the C Tango, but I do alternate. So I love this because it genuinely is just, it's just such a really nice texture. It's just like, it doesn't feel like it disappears. You know, it stays there and it's just not greasy. It just gives me that really nice hydration. It's so nice. And I am just super impressed with Drunk Elephant. Like I genuinely really love their eye products. I need to give their actual skin products a bit of a go because I feel like I haven't taken the time out to try them, but you know, they're, they're good. Okay, I'm going to go into my moisturizer. Now, the, the moisturizer is very important, not only for your hydration, but also for how your makeup is going to kind of like sit, you know. So I am applying my Wind Medina Dew. It is a really nice kind of light moisturizer and it gives me that hydration and like, but it has this like slight kind of like, it's not heavy. It gives me this really nice kind of like watery texture. It's a watery texture, but it's very light on my skin. So I feel like when I don't want too much kind of product build up and I, well not that I ever do want product build up, but when I want everything to be very light on my skin, that's when I would use something like Medina Dew because it genuinely, it helps to like kind of plump the skin as well. It literally gives me 
I don't know why the word literally came out weird there. It literally gives me kind of like instant hydration, but then it lasts all day. Like I don't have to worry about my skin getting dry or feeling tight or dehydrated. It just smells of like this really subtle rose water. I don't usually like rose. That's why I'm surprised that I really love this moisturizer because it smells really good but it's not overpowering. You know, like it's not too fragrancy. It's like, it's a nice product. It's really, really nice. The hydration is amazing. It gives me that kind of like natural luminosity to my skin. So it kind of like comes through my makeup, but doesn't disrupt my makeup. It's also very kind of like, I feel like my skin feels quite plumped after as well. Now I'm going to go in with a little bit of primer and I'm going to be using my Tatcha liquid silk canvas. And this is just going to kind of like give me a good kind of just like you know like smooth over those pores or any kind of pits that I have on my skin. I also feel like that kind of acts like a bit of a barrier between my moisturizer and my makeup because I feel like it just kind of like lets my moisturizer get to work if you see what I mean. So that's that. We're all ready for the base now so let's move on. I know you guys love these follow along videos because honestly I've had so much good feedback from you guys and it really excites me that there is something that is different on this channel you know. Guys we're already at 300,000. We're above it like we're, we're way above it now so like, I think it's like 305,000 now. That's crazy. Do you guys, and I know, so I recognize all of you, like as in some of your profile pictures when I see your comments and some of you are like, you've been here from day one. You're my, like literally my day ones. You've been here right from the beginning. And then sometimes you message me and you're like, I remember when you only had a hundred thousand. I'm like, only at that point, I was like, whoa, I've got a hundred thousand subscribers. That's crazy. And like, I really want to get, I now like, I feel like it's possible. Let's get there. Let's get to that million mark. I'm super excited about it. I know you guys can help me do it. Let's keep sharing this channel, sharing the videos, get these videos out there. Let's show everyone what they're missing. I feel like it's really, I, I don't know if this sounds silly, but I feel like it's really empowering. I'm really like, because I feel so transparent and I feel so like I'm stripped in the sense that I'm just genuinely giving you everything I know. Like there's nothing to hide. Like I am giving you everything I know and that feels empowering to me, you know, to know that I'm not holding back on anything. And it's taken me this time to know you guys. And I, I know you through your comments. And I know you from when you message me and the things that you say and the amazing comments that you you leave and that helps me to know you better you know so I feel like this isn't just one-sided I feel like I know you guys as well and you guys have made me so much more confident and you've made me feel like you know what you can do it and each time I'm stripping the layers peeling the layers off it's like an onion and I'm just like letting it go and it's because of you because you're helping me and you're making me feel like I can do this you know and we can get there we can get to that million mark we can go above and beyond that and I just want to I'm super excited about making this channel like reinvesting into it and just bringing you new things. But I can only do that when the channel grows more. So I'm really excited about it. And I know you guys are here with me to help me do that. So let's go. That was really cringe. Let's go, but let's go. Okay, let's get started with our concealer. You guys all know we're all about underpainting here, right? So if you don't know what underpainting is, head over and look at my base, my foundation playlist first, watch the underpainting video, which is I think concealer before or after foundation. Watch that and come back and watch this because it's all going to make sense to you, but you can still watch this anyway because I'm going to explain as I go along. Okay, I'm going to be using my Hourglass Vanish Concealer in Beach. Now, what I'm going to be doing is applying this. I'm going to set my eyelids first because we don't want them to look all like dark and everything. So I'm just going to like kind of even out my skin tone there. I'm literally just bouncing, like pressing. So as I'm pressing, it's like bouncing off my skin. But I'm going to go to, into more detail when I go onto the rest of the face. Let's just get these kind of like eyelids done. Just gonna get my powder, getting my Ben I banana banana powder, banana, <laughs> banana powder, and I'm just gonna like press that in there. And just dusting off that powder with my Real Techniques brush. Don't worry, we're gonna go into real detail now going onto the rest of the face. I'm trying to grow my hair a little bit, and currently it's not grown enough, so I have like two ponies, and the other one, it really does not look good from the back. Now, I am going to be applying my concealer on my under eyes. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to conceal certain areas which are quite dark, and obviously that area is my under eye area. So what we're going to be doing is drawing a little line here, 
Now you can make your line as big or as small as you want with as much concealer as you want. It's what you feel works for you. You probably will have to do this once and then kind of figure out how much you need. Like you'll do it the first time and then when you look at the finished result, you'll be like, okay, I, pro I, I need more concealer on my under eyes. In which case, do it again, put more concealer. Or you might be like, you know what, that was too much concealer. Rain it in a little bit when you first apply it. Don't do this the first time and then look at it and go, that doesn't work for me because you've done something wrong. You haven't applied the right amount of concealer for you. I didn't initially the first time I did this on myself know, you know, I knew after doing it a few times that I need more or less concealer. So hopefully that helps. Now I'm going to do a little bit here. Now that for me is enough because I love a flawless under eye area. So I'm just going to like apply it here and here and then I'm going to explain to you something. This area here, you have to look at where my placement is, right? Because you can go away and you can apply it. And the reason I can I can understand that you won't necessarily get it the first time around is because I've seen some people who have kind of recreated looks that I've done on YouTube. So I've watched the videos and I've seen where they are applying it. And they've realized themselves throughout the video that, you know, okay, that didn't work for me. I don't think I applied it in, in the same place. You know, it's not something that only I have noticed. They've noticed it themselves, themselves and they've realized it. I've realized that some people don't kind of take things in in the same way, you know? So it translates slightly differently or maybe you, you know, have skipped little bits and you don't realize everyone learns in a different way so what I really want you to understand is you have to look at the placement as well use the kind of concealer that works for you it may be that you don't want a super flawless finish on you know at the end so you know you'll be quite happy with using a light coverage concealer but if you want a flawless base with the type that I go for because you suffer from dark circles this is going to work now I really want you to look at the placement can you see I haven't let it touch my under eye area, I've left a little bit of a gap, okay? And then it's underneath. You don't wanna go too close to your under eye area, like your lash line, because it's just gonna be too much product there. And then we've taken it out here a little bit because I know that my dark circles, that area is quite big. So I know that it's more or less covering the whole area. Now this section here, I put it like that because I like to blend it upward so that it gives me a slight lift because when you start blending this in and it goes upwards, it gives you the illusion of a lifted finish. So I'm going to go in with my sponge now. Now you can use a beauty blender, you can use a real technique sponge, whatever you feel works for you, but just make sure that sponge is not overly hard. I've seen some sponges and they're so rock solid. It's like, you know, it might be great because it doesn't absorb anything, but it's just too hard. My sponge, I wet it, I squeeze it all out, I wrap a tissue around it and then I squeeze it again. So it absorbs all the excess water. So it's slightly damp. Okay. Make sure it's not too wet. It shouldn't be leaving droplets on your face. Now I'm going to go in with my sponge and I'm going to start from the inner corner and I'm going to do, can you I'm doing quick movements, right? And then I'm looking up, I'm looking like a crazy person. And then I'm gonna move over to this bit here. And I'm going up here because I'm taking it in the same di direction that I applied it. Now, can you see my movements are short and small? And when I say short and small, I mean, I'm bouncing, but it's not a big bounce. It's like short bounce, small bounce. I'm very quick. And then as I'm moving, I'm still bouncing. I never move along without bouncing. So I'm constantly bouncing and be precise with your bouncing. I call that buffing, but I mean, you know, you can, I'm saying bouncing right now because I feel like that might be a bit more widely known or, you know, more kind of what you might use. Same on this side. So you are taking it above into the lower lash line, but not straight away because you like obviously want to spread that product out first see how we've now covered the whole under eye area there it's completely covered okay so now i'm going to go in with another concealer you don't have to do this part you can skip this part if it's too much for you i am going to be using a different concealer it's the shiseido synchro skin concealer and i'm using it because it's not as heavy as the vanish concealer the vanish concealer from hourglass is quite a thick heavy concealer i don't want to put that anywhere else on my face because i really don't feel like i need the coverage but i do want to use this thin concealer which is a little bit lighter than my skin tone because it gives me the brightness so it comes through my foundation it's slightly brighter and it lifts up certain areas so I'm applying it here so hopefully that answers your question as to why I'm using a different concealer because I know some people are going to ask because I think I've done this before in certain videos and some of you have asked why have I done that okay I'm using my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood complexion brush now I'm just going to 
buff this in. So I'm just, again, bouncing, but with my brush. And what this does, it's gonna brighten up the area. And it's also gonna kind of open up that area because it's a little bit lighter than my skin tone. Now, another reason I do like doing this is because I feel like if I don't, then I've got all this great coverage on my under eye and then everywhere else, it's a little bit, you know, like less coverage. And I feel like because it's less coverage, it makes the under eye stand out a bit more. And I don't want that. So I want everything to look very uniform. So that's another reason I apply a thin layer of concealer, which isn't too heavy. So just down the nose, cause that's also gonna help to kind of like highlight that area. Chin, I'm gonna reiterate, the reason I didn't use the same concealer is because that concealer is very heavy. It works great for my under eyes, but it's too heavy for everywhere else on my face. Now we're going in with another concealer. This is the dark concealer. This basically is to sculpt the face. So this is my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. We're gonna apply it from the ear, just a little way in, not all the way in, cause it's just gonna be way too much otherwise, cause it's gonna naturally blend when we use the brush. I'm okay, gonna go around here, under the jawline, and then we're gonna also do the nose, which I always do. I like using concealers to contour because I feel like I like the colors. I saw a video recently, I think it was an Instagram reel or something, and it was showing like what the difference is between contour and bronzer. I can't tell you how much this frustrates me that people think you have to separate the two. Like honestly, I don't think you have to, right? And I don't think, like, I know people are like, yeah, but look at the difference. Like the bronzer is warming, the contour, it, contouring is like, it's, they don't say it, right? But you can see it when you look at it, it's gray. Why would I want that on my face? Why would I want a gray shade on my face? Because when I look at shadows on my face, they don't look gray to me. So <laughs> I don't know where this is going from, but it might look gray on certain skin tones, but that gen generally does not, is not the case. If it works for you, because maybe you're paler skin tone and fair enough, that will work. Maybe you need a gray like contour, you know, because maybe that's the shadow, that's how a shadow looks on your face. You're my skin color. You're not seeing any gray shadows anywhere. Like that's not happening. So it's gonna be, it's still gonna be dark, right? So even this contour that I've used, it's not necessarily warming. It's quite a dark shade. So I, what I'm doing is I'm creating these shadows with this concealer concealer and I'm going into my hairline. I don't mind if it looks warm as well, you know, because that's my preference. I really don't want you guys to get sucked into this whole, there is a right and wrong way. There is in certain aspects of certain things, you know, things like that. I just feel like if you want to know simple beauty, simple application techniques, then this is where you're going to find it because I really do try and make everything very easy to understand and I don't want to overcomplicate anything for you. See how I buffed that in and it naturally started kind of like shifting towards the middle, which is why I stopped it a lot earlier when I applied it. And I'm also just everything, I'm just bouncing off. Like one, that's all it takes. You don't need to go back and forth or anywhere. You don't need to try and overly, you know, don't try and over manipulate where that product goes. Just kind of like keep it simple. Trust me, it will blend. Now this, I'm kind of like, I go like back and forth because I really do need to spread it out a bit, but then I take it down there to create that shadow because you really don't want it to look like there's just a random line there. See how we're just pressing, pressing. And as we go in, there you go. Like that's all you need to do. You don't need to move it around too much. Okay, flip it over to use the small side. This is where I like to just kind of like keep that shape there, but just soften the edges a bit. Okay, so that's my concealer done and I've managed to sculpt at the same time. Like how great is that that I don't have to use separate products to actually sculpt my face? I've done it with my concealer and because I've done it with concealer and concealer is, is kind of like, well, most brands make them too last on your skin, it's not going anywhere. So I don't have to worry about using extra layers of products that I don't actually need because I can do it with the initial layer that I was gonna put on anyway. Hopefully that makes sense. Now I'm gonna use my foundation. I'm using my Ambient Soft Glow Foundation from Hourglass, this shade is 10.5. I recently discovered this foundation, absolutely amazing. It's a new foundation, so good. Such a nice foundation, I absolutely love it. So I'm gonna just use my sponge. I've got it on the back of my hand, so it's just there. And I've basically just spread it, a little, not all of it, so I haven't gone right into it. I've just taken a little bit, moved it out, and then buffed that 
into my hands with my sponge. You've got to remember that you buff the product into your sponge before you buff it into your face. Because if I just went in with a whole load of product and went there, I'm going to get a big blob of foundation. It's not going to be even. It's just you've got a big blob there. Now you've got to work to move that blob everywhere else, right? So just buff it into your sponge so that there's not any there's no extra product on the sponge. And then we're going to start buffing into the face. So now what we're doing, starting from the forehead, you see how I started from there? Moved it out there moved it out there almost doing like a lotus kind of like shape going into the hairline because I want most of that foundation product to be in the center and then whatever's left the, the, the little bit that's left we spread into the hairline so that there's less product on the perimeter of the face I'm taking I've, I basically I went like that took a little bit like that now we're going to do the nose this way this part that I explained to you is very important because what that means is you're not actually taking too much product onto the sponge and you get a really nice uniform layer. So each time I go into that foundation, I'm sliding a little bit of the foundation across, not all of it. So I'm, there's a big blob there. I'm taking a tiny bit, sliding it across and then buffing that bit into the sponge. Now I go into my under eye. This is where bouncing. Everywhere I'm going, I'm bouncing, small movements, quick movements, and I'm never moving the sponge without bouncing. I'm never gliding. Same on the other side. And slowly we're connecting everything together. Now I leave this bit out and I go along this jawline area first, and then I do this bit last. The reason being is because there's a dark color there. I don't want that to transfer anywhere else. I'm gonna do the jawline like the chin area so i make sure i go this is where i do drag under the jawline i need to make sure i really pull that color down because you want to make sure you don't actually have any like a line there so you've got to make sure you drag it down a little bit that's the only place take a little bit more product now this is where we're going to do this bit and this kind of like seals everything together. See how you can still see that shadow coming through? I don't need to use gray for that. I used a deep brown, a chocolate brown, and it worked wonders. I, like if I, you don't need it. I just don't understand why we like, I, it, like I said, it works for some skin tones, but what annoys me is when I see it, people say it as though this is the right way. No one talks about, hold on, is that the right shade for a darker skin tone? No, it's not. Now that we've done that, we are gonna set it. So now what I'm gonna do is get my powder. So I'm getting my banana powder. I've put a little bit into the palm of my hand there i've got my laura mercier powder puff i'm wrapping it so like squeezing it so it's like thin like that and then i'm going to press into this powder and then i tap it to get the excess off now i'm going to go along under eye here and i'm going to do the same on the other side then i like to kind of like go along there And then I just go everywhere else, whatever's left on that sponge. Okay, now I'm getting my hourglass veil brush, the big part of the brush, whatever's left in my hand, which isn't a lot. I just kind of like, and you don't even need to do that, you could just go straight onto the face, but I'm just dusting everything off. But obviously this brush is too big for my under eye area. So I'm gonna get my Real Techniques brush and just go over the under eye area. There's nothing on the brush. Oh my gosh, I finished watching The New Love is Blind. What on earth? What do you guys think of that? Did you watch it all? Did you watch the reunion? That was crazy. Zayna was like on fire. She just looked insane. She looked so good, didn't she? She looked really good and she was like, she just said it how it was. What did you think? about it I, I really want to know because i've been watching it and sometimes i sit there and i'm watching i'm like i wonder what my like youtube family think let me just very quickly do my brows put some blush and stuff on and highlight and then i'm going to be back so that we can just talk about how this all looks
Okay, I've done my brows. I've put a little bit of bronzer on. I think that's about it, yeah. So, oh, and I can't, like kind of like added a bit of highlight to my nose. So that's basically it. I really wanted to show you what it looks like finished off, you know, when you've got all the kind of main bits on, like your bronzer, blush, whatever. I really do hope that this has kind of like made it a bit easier for you on how you apply and blend concealer and foundation because it's easy for me to kind of like add it into a routine or a tutorial that I'm doing and I'm focusing more on the eyes and then you kind of like try and do it and then you do the eyes and you do the base and the base isn't that great so you wonder why everything doesn't look right so it's really good for you to understand like that's why i like to break things up so that you understand how you can kind of like mentally you break things up yourself as well it makes it so much easier so yeah i do hope that you like it i know i love this kind of base this is my favorite type of base plus i know it's not going anywhere so that's another reason i love it now wherever you are in the world i really do hope you have the most productive day full of love of light and laughter. I hope you've enjoyed this video today and it's really helped you understand application placement and blending. I really do hope you guys are pros by now, but keep watching it because I think the more you practice, the more you're gonna get better at it. Now, if you do like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button so that you don't ever miss any of my future videos. And I will see you on the next video.